I believe, you know, that we're all nowadays too conventional and too regimented. We believe what we are told and we do as we are told. What I want to do in this programme is to examine the ideas and the views of some people who aren't shackled in this way, who are quite prepared to go out on a limb and think for themselves. Now, whether they're right or whether they're wrong is neither here nor there. Uh, I may fundamentally disagree with quite a lot of what we're going to hear. This doesn't matter. This is merely a question of personal opinion. And, of course, in astronomy, there's a great deal we don't know. But we are learning more every year, in fact, every month. For example, we have now the idea of going out into space with projects such as Apollo. 20 seconds now, we get all out and clear, Frank Foreman. All looks great. As the astronauts went moonward, they could see the Earth. And to most people, this new view confirmed that the world is a globe, but not to everyone. And while in Apollo 8, the commander, Colonel Borman, mentioned the views of Mr. Samuel Shenton, president of the International Flat Earth Society, who lives in Dover and who believes the Earth is shaped like a gramophone record, with the North Pole in the middle and a wall of ice all round the edge. Uh, links very much with the statement which was given out by uh, General Borman, the astronaut, he spoke about the Earth in its early stages. This, the Earth in its early stages was revealed from the waters and it was revealed as a, a four-square fabric. Like or, this, in fact? Absolutely like that. And this is water around it? Absolutely, yes, yes. The waters were dispelled from the Earth and the whole thing was covered by uh, a heaved-up structure, shami him in the Hebrew, a heaved up structure actually in water. What about the astronauts then? If they didn't in fact go round the Earth, uh, what did they go round? Their track uh, goes across the Earth's surface, yes, so much so in that... Here. The North Pole in the middle and the South Pole all round. Yes. Uh, the astronauts are fired off from Cape Canaveral, uh, or Kennedy as it is yes. today. Uh, they went on a, an egg-shaped orbit over this like that. Keeping the same height all the time? Absolutely so. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Littleton said that the, uh, to put a thing into orbit, you carry it up to a height and then level off. What exactly is this line here? Oh, they, those uh, result uh, from the camera uh, photographing the, the horizon and the, the photographs result in these humped effects which people are presented with that they think the Earth is round. In fact, there isn't any South Pole. No, no, no. The um, 60,000 miles was round the ice barrier and uh, so far man has not gone across the ice barrier to investigate any further. And I wonder if everything now is so stereotyped and conventional that independent thought is stifled early on. And if so, does school play a part in the stifling? I decided to ask the boys of Homewood House, near Tunbridge Wells, whether they accepted everything that their masters told them, or whether they were ready to strike out along an independent line. Why does snow fall down? It's water freezing. Uh, it's water freezing. freezing. And it's too heavy to be held up by the atmosphere, so it falls down. Why, why does it fall down? This is the point. It's gravity. Well, it's gravity, yes. Now, what's gravity? Do you know? Yes, I was. One at a time. What, what do you think gravity is? Well, it is, well, um, um, uh, as it says, a push or a pull, which makes things fall towards the this, earth. This is what you've been told, isn't it? Yes. Have you ever tried to prove it? What yes. about you? Yes. Well, you thrust, you thrust, you thrust yes. stone up well, in the air, sure. and it comes down again. I know it does. What would you say, for example, of someone who said that the universe ended in a blank wall? Would you think this was reasonable? No. no. What is no. illogical? No. What is what's on the other side? Come on, you haven't had to say it yet. What do you think about it all? Well, if it does end at the wall... What's on the other side of the wall? Yes. There can't there's be, be just nothing. The there's got to be something. Unless it's just on the other hand, solidness if, forever. Well, if, what if, on the, up the wall? if on the other hand the universe doesn't end, then it's got to go on forever, hasn't yes. it? Well, can yeah. you imagine that? No. 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 no of course you can't. It's, it's like a road never ending and never beginning. Do you ever question this? I mean, do you ever think no. that? No. Do you ever think that everything that we are taught? I'm not talking about religion at the moment. Everything that we are taught about science, particularly, just could be wrong, and there may be some frightful flaw that nobody's thought about. Oh, Has yes. that ever occurred yes. to you? Yes. Something well, really fundamental. I mean, in either mathematics or science itself, or anything you like. What would you say then? Any, any, any other? Well, the molecule yeah, structure yeah, might yeah, be wrong. Are. The molecule structure might yeah. be wrong. I mean, um, the, molecu the molecules that we know are based on carbon. Ah, oh, now who's told you this? A science master. And you just accept it? Naturally, because I can't think of anything else that it could be made up of. I you see. What's a jolly good reason? Some, someone, well, it could be some unheard of thing. Very fair. 
They think for themselves, but perhaps only within certain limits. We must accept some things, I know that, but there's a danger that we're going to turn into regimented sheep if we accept too much. Or have we already done it? And I very much fear that I'm one of these sheep already. I've become ultra-conventional. I believe that the Earth is a planet, uh, a globe nearly 8,000 miles across going around the Sun. I believe that the Moon is another globe going around the Earth, that the Sun is a star, and that the other stars are themselves suns. And I base this upon uh, what I hope is reasonable interpretation of the facts, as I've been told them, and the things that I've seen through this telescope. What the independent thinker has to do is to start absolutely from scratch, look out into the universe, take what he sees there, and then put his own independent opinion on it without bothering about anybody else. And this is exactly what has been done by Mr. John Bradbury of ashton under -Lyme, who's thrown all orthodoxy out of the window and has constructed a picture of the universe that is all his own, based partly upon theory and partly upon observations made with his strictly unorthodox telescope. Well, Mr. Bradbury, this looks like a conventional telescope, but I gather it isn't. No, no, it's far from being a conventional telescope because it isn't split up in the lenses. Most of the lenses in this telescope are at the eye end. Down the here, you mean? End, yes. yes, there's only one object lens at the other end. What's the purpose of having so many lenses? Well, you can't get the power without. You must have the power to bring the object very much closer. I... Uh, with a conventional telescope, you can't do that. I would have thought mm. that every time you passed a, a beam of light through an extra lens, you'd lose a bit of light. Yes, that is so, that you do lose light. But looking at objects in the sky, you don't need to lose it. Looking at your map of the Earth, it looks to me as if you've got the North Pole in the middle and all directions are south. Is, uh, is this correct? Uh, yes, it is correct in that method. Uh, what about gravity? Uh, Sir Isaac Newton, when he was in an orchard in Lincolnshire, uh, saw an apple drop fall from the tree and um, he brought out his theory of gravity that the gravity had drawn this apple to the ground yet he didn't make a law which held the other apples on now he also said that if you could stand a needle up on it point without any support he would believe that the world wasn't going round naturally I had to bring out a new theory to prove the shape of the world, the shape of the Earth too, you see. Which is what you've uh, done. Yes, that is it. And you see, no matter where we are on the Earth's surface, we will always be pulled back to the centre. And that's why you can't go to the edge of the Earth, Yes, you cannot go to the edge of the Earth. Well, let's have a look at the actual diagram of the Earth itself, shall we? And this, I think, is very interesting. Here we are. Now, I know that you've got the Earth as with a flat top and a uh, kind of a round underneath. Yes, is, this, yes. uh, is this correct? Uh, yes, that is quite so. Yes, you see, this is more like a jigsaw puzzle. You can't complete it without a flat-topped Earth. So this is the entire universe. Yes, effect. yes. You see, you've got here. You've got the full uh, uh, metallic stony background, and this, of course, was where the flow of magnetism is. What's this line down here? Now, this line is for the sub-semi vacuum. It divides the pure vacuum from the semi-vacuum which surrounds the Earth itself. Uh, what about the Sun and Moon? The Moon... It's a flat disk, yes. isn't it? Not actually flat. It is slightly convex, but not much on the surface. Now, it is a disk of carbon. The Moon's made of carbon, Just isn't it? carbon, yes. just a carbon disk, which shows in this. Yeah. This I saw two years ago um, on the Harvest Moon, September Moon. And uh, this material here is plasticine phosphorus, or a material very, very similar to that. But where does that come from? Where does the plasticine phosphorus actually picked up? It's uh, circulating in the atmosphere. When the moon's uh, waning, it allows it to go off, and when it's waxing, it picks it up again. Now, this illustration here is of more of the moon itself, with a finger-like projection coming over the top. This happened in 1953, and uh, the finger light projection stayed on for three days. There was only one there, was there? There was only one, yes, definitely one. I built another telescope, and I used uh, an astronomer's telescope, too, to prove whether I was right or not, but I couldn't see it with the astronomer's telescope. And was this due to the plasticine phosphorus spreading over the moon gradually? Yes, but I think it picked a little more up than it should have done, you see. The surface of the moon, the thickness of the surface, is around about one inch. This has been really worked out. 
uh, mathematically, it's really been worked out. What, incidentally, about the sun? Uh, do you think the sun is small also? The sun would be, I should think, about twice the size of the moon because it can... Uh, uh, it, it can the moon can go in the front of the sun and cover the old sun up. And that is why the sun really is only twice the distance from, uh, of the moon. From and, of course, the and of course the sun presumably is very much hotter than the moon. Uh, yes, if we speak of hot as hot, but the sun actually is cold. It's I very, see. very cold indeed, because we couldn't get uh, a lot of heat if the sun wasn't cold, you see. You know, I think you're going to be the first to admit that these ideas and theories of yours are not conventional ones. Correctly, yes. Yeah. Well, I know that you've also given lectures at various universities. Yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't at your lecture at Cambridge University no. or at Keele, but I heard about from people yes. who were. And how I'm do you not... find that other people react to your ideas? Well, some people, of course, when, when it's all explained thoroughly, they will accept it. But if it isn't explained thoroughly, well, of course, they think we're nutcases or something, <laughs> you see. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mr. Burberry hasn't yet started his photographic experiments, but when he does so, I am sure that the results will be truly remarkable. Let me concede that I don't pretend to agree with his theories, but I have the greatest admiration for him as a man who's had the moral courage to break clean away from every semblance of conventionality, strike out for himself, and lecture publicly about it with no fear of ridicule or scorn. To me, Mr. Burberry is the supreme example of the independent thinker.